auction. Uh, within just a few minutes, the auction's gonna start. I thought I'd log on a little bit early just so I can kind of talk you guys through um, the sale, what's going on, and uh, also just a, a chance to say hello, really. <laughs> um, I am upstairs in our, uh, I guess they call it a bonus room. It's sort of a living room in the second floor of our house. Uh, this is where, uh, I th if you watch the video where we're doing the house build that I'm talking about where we're going to put the TV and stuff. Well, that's a TV back there. I did a video, in fact, we kind of made over this room a year and a half ago or so, or a couple years ago, uh, which you can watch on the YouTube channel. We did, uh, I think it was a home makeover challenge where Melissa did the main floor and I did the second floor. Anyway, uh, that's where I am right now. And I'm using my new desk, which is in fact a lot older than my old desk. It's a um, 1800s uh, pedestal desk. And um, yeah, I think it'll give me a good layout for the uh, auction feed today. It should be an exciting one. Um, we have 930 lots going through the sale. Uh, everything from uh, toy Hot Wheel cars, collectibles, um, depression era glass, um, right up through original sheets of Beethoven music. And I'm talking about like, not, you know, printed 100 years after he passed away. I mean, from when he was still alive. <laughs> um, you know, block printed uh, pressings of just tons of music. When you see those books that are on later, and that's why I don't know how those are gonna do. Um, there are booksellers selling just individual sheets, like one little sheet of music for like a thousand bucks on some sites. Those books have like, I don't know, a hundred, tons of different uh, sheets of music inside of it from many different uh, musicians and authors. So uh, if a person watching is a reseller, there's probably an opportunity, not that you'd want to rip the books apart, but there's a lot of value in some of the stuff there and there should be some good deals for people. As for me, um, a lot of the stuff that's going up for auction are things that I've acquired either on videos that you've seen over the last little while um, or things that we've had around the store. And as you know, I like to keep the store fresh and keep things moving. So I went around the shop, I pulled a whole bunch of stuff for the sale. We got a thousand lots, uh, we're close to a thousand, 930, and it should be a pretty good sale. Um, if you're interested in uh, continuing to watch the auction, you can log into kauctions.ca. It's a really easy process, very easy and quick process. And um, they just put a $1 hold on your credit card for seven days just to verify that you're a real person. In case you also want to bid, it's good to have that information. They will ship all over the world. Um, keep in mind, of course, a really big thing would be expensive to ship like to New Zealand or something. So small stuff, which most of this is, it should be pretty easy to ship. Um, and they do combine lots into one big box and they'll ship it out. Um, so it should be an exciting sale. Um, the auction house, I'm just getting it, the, the feed all geared up now on my end. And it looks like they are about to get going here in uh, just a couple minutes time. Um, oh, I'm getting lots of happy birthday messages. My birthday is actually tomorrow, which is funny. I actually kind of forgot that my birthday was tomorrow, but my birthday is tomorrow. But thank you for the uh, birthday messages. Um, hoping that, uh, well, actually the auction happening the day before my birthday is pretty good timing because this, this is just a nice thing to get off my chest to get this over and done with. Um, and then we have a second auction, uh, which is just records mainly, with um, you know some a couple instruments and some things. That, uh, and that is December 18th. So if you're logged into Castner today and you scroll down to December 18th, you'll see a whole bunch of records that we put through. Um, really, really great idea with the business to, to clean house every once in a while. And this time of year is perfect because there's people that are looking for Christmas presents, uh, looking for fun stuff for themselves, and it um, has a possibility of getting to you before Christmas by buying it now. So I think this is about the most ideally uh, planned auction we could have done. Um, to Ivy and to Kathy, uh, Kathy Cash, hello, Kathy. I don't know why I gave Kathy jazz hands. Ha! <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a, an interesting day. I know that there is a lot of interest in the um, original sheets of music, the music books. What's interesting about them, and some people are just chatting and I'm reading the comments here, the music books, which will actually sell in about uh, three hours time or so from now, because they're in the uh, 400 lot sort of category. Um, and they usually do about 100 lots an hour. So about three or four hours from now, those should come up. Um, lots 2400 or somewhere around there is where it starts. Those items are um, authentic. They're from the era of the Prince Regent, which is when um, the Prince had to take over for King George because he went a little bit crazy after losing America to the uh, Americans. <laughs> um, you've probably seen the movie called The Madness of King George, maybe you haven't anyway. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting story. So for a time, the king could not, uh, was not mentally capable of running the kingdom, and so they put the Prince in charge. These are dated, uh, 
from HRH Prince Regent. So a very specific time frame around 1810 or so, uh, around the time of Napoleonic Wars and all kinds of stuff was going on at that time. It was a really, really interesting piece of history. Um, and they say Mr. Kemp on them. And uh, Joseph Kemp was a uh, composer and uh, the founder of music schools, essentially. So there's some really interesting history attached to these. I think it's gonna be really cool. Anyway, guys, it looks like we're about to get started here. I'm gonna get the uh, volume turned up on the auction sale. And uh, without further ado, let's flip this around and see. So, so far, I just see a guy sitting there drinking a coffee. <laughs> um, and we, I don't think we have sound yet. Or do we? We should have sound. But uh, we're just going to get going here right away. You can see that some of the first lots, the lots always happen in order. I'm going to just flatten the screen out a little bit so it's a little bit more level. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. If the um, broadcast today seems a little bit fuzzy, um, you can change your settings. We always hear this. Uh, there is a way to change your settings uh, to at least 720p or higher. Um, that should give you clear content and uh, clear image when we're doing the broadcast. Welcome to another Caster Auction. There we go. Uh, it's our curiosity sale today. Uh, we have well, he sounds got, a little fuzzy. Uh, our regular sale tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Uh, don't forget uh, our restaurant sale. First it's item up is a captain's week. hat. Uh, uh, we that one and we'll have a regular sale over on this side so two auctions there we go and, guys uh, going at the same time next week and we've got lots of nice restaurant equipment today's our curiosity sale lots of nice items here today uh welcome to everyone around the world and uh enjoy the day let's have some fun and uh, it is um it is good to do these auctions and get an idea about what sells and what doesn't too. Uh, we got 20 25 20, oh, I think his, his microphone's a little bit fuzzy, but... Hang on. I'm just going to send them a note. I just said, your mic is pretty fuzzy, because listen to that. You hear that? That's not my speakers. Uh, I, this is the picture they should have showed. It's, it's the clothing that's actually valuable when it comes to G.I. Joe stuff. Every pant, every outfit, every hat that's in there is collectible to somebody for some reason. Um, that's their take on, I think, the Bionic Man. He was never really all that popular, that character. But somebody bought that. It's got value just in the, uh, just in the clothing. This is actually a really big piece. Ten bucks, so, huh? Sorry. I'm happy to see things go to a new home. I don't want to bring anything back to the store. We were using this as just a um, bowl in the store to keep um, collectibles in, and I thought, you know what? I can put them in something else. Let's sell the bowl. So there it is. Looks like it's going to be going to Colorado here. So, Off it goes. It's a neat little um, general store scale. I had this on the counter by our till for a little while. Um, I was keeping uh, chicken bone candy in it. If you know what chicken bones are, they are um, popular in the east coast of Canada. I think they're pretty much only pop. Well, I don't know other people like them too. They're like a cinnamon flavored little candy stick sort of thing with chocolate in the middle. <laughs> Oh, I guess we're just catching up here. Doctor Who. This is a neat piece. A lot of Doctor Who fans out there. Somebody's going to have a little remote control Dalek rolling around their house today. <laughs> if you thought pets were destructive, <laughs> just let a Dalek loose in your house. There it goes. This chair is about the size for Cabbage Patch doll or something. Like it's a bigger chair. It's not like a, it's not a Barbie sized chair. It's a little bit bigger. Um, the reason I bought it from the lady uh, from her house was just because I really appreciate the workmanship that went into it. It's an actual wood turned rocking chair in miniature. Just really, really nicely done. Guys, I'm gonna refresh the feed because it sounds like the voice is off a little bit from the, uh, from the connection. So let's see if maybe by reconnecting, I can make it better. These statues, the guy bought them from, was actually the same fellow that bought the Sir John Franklin uh, wedding gift that I have talked about on occasion. 
he bought the uh, brought these in. He was moving. Very, very lovely man. Um, and uh, he paid, I think, one hundred and seventy five dollars each from the Franklin Mint for these things. And that was probably in the nineteen eighties or so. So at uh, you know that's that's an idea. Well, I guess it gives you an idea that sometimes when things say that they are collectible, sometimes they're not. We're not as collectible as you think. Here, I'll try and zoom in a little bit. There we go. Maybe that's a little bit better for you guys. Custer. I wonder if they ever made a Custer's mustard. I don't know what it would taste like. Beard hair and suede and sweat, maybe. I don't think you'd want Custer's mustard. <laughs> <laughs> probably why nobody nobody's ever done it but these are nice statues they're you know over a foot tall oh this was kind of a cool thing back in the 70s G.I. Joe when it was called Today's Man they had to call them action figures and not dolls so the boys wouldn't mind playing with them you know here's a fun fact prior to World War II Pink was actually considered a, a masculine color, and blue was considered a feminine color. And it wasn't until after, really, the Second World War that it switched. Think back to every pre-war cowboy. Roy Rogers, all those guys, they had pink Western shirts. You don't think much about it, but pink was considered, pinks and reds were considered masculine, and blues were considered more uh, of a delicate, more feminine color. Um, if you look back at paintings from the 1800s and, and prior, a lot of times the boys are wearing pink. It shows you how quick um, societal, you know, society can change our ideas of what's what. But when it comes to Barbies and stuff like that, they didn't want to call them dolls. Boys won't play with that. Let's call them action figures. <laughs> Okay, his his uh his chirping on the uh, microphone was driving me a little crazy there. But we're at the uh, transistor radio. I found this in a garage in a box. Um, and the nice thing was, I don't think it's ever been used. It still had its original box, the original um, packing on the inside, and everything. It looks like it's basically a new old stock 1960s diplomat radio. Um, there was a time a few years ago when transistor radios were huge. They were a really big deal. Um, especially pocket, vest pocket radios, really bright colors. Some of them can be worth thousands of dollars. You'd be surprised. But it, like an early Sony in a bright, bright red color or something with a nice leather case, those can be quite expensive. So uh, don't second guess the uh, transistor radios you have in your house. The smaller a radio, the smaller the transistor radio, oftentimes the better. The more colorful, the better. Um, but that one we just sold was in great shape and it sold for 20 bucks. Here you are, Richard Petty, Pez Dispenser Car. So it's like a 124 scale Pez Dispenser. There's still a lot of NASCAR fans out there, a lot of Richard Petty fans. Oh, they're, they can, they, they're they trying to get rid of some of the static on the microphone, I guess which would be good for the broadcast. But um, right now, as they're, as they're working on the uh, getting the microphone fixed, this Kathy in Texas is like, just end it. I want to buy it already. <laughs> Worried that somebody's going to sneak in there with an extra do dollar or two bid or whatever and, and grab it. Um, but uh, there are some Pez dispensers, and I guess I'll give the commentary while we wait here. Some Pez dispensers can be worth a ton of money. There is a space ray gun Pez dispenser. Oh, he really just he really just jumped right in there. Um, the ray gun Pez dispenser. Um, some of them be worth five hundred thousand dollars. The early Pez dispensers that have no feet. Uh, a Pez dispenser usually has like a little spot on the bottom where it can sit on a table. The early ones didn't have that and they, you know, people wanted to stand them up and they would tip over. Oh, this is a neat lot here. The vintage hot rod car cards. These would have come in every magazine, I think, at the time. Uh, it was super neat. That was a good buy for somebody for 15 bucks. Nice early 
Ram Lyle's Pure Indian Tea. It's really cool graphics on it, nice artwork. It dates from the 1920s or so, somewhere around then. People use these in their kitchens now. You could put your current tea bags, your current stuff in them. Oh, this is kind of cool. It's a sheet of uncut, 32 uncut sequential US $1 bills. It's a factory sheet of them. It would be funny to take that in somewhere and go to pay. The total comes to $32. Great, you can just hand them a big roll. But something like that would look really cool framed. You know, you take it into a framing shop and get it framed and hang it on the wall. It's kind of like pop art almost. Oh, this should be an interesting piece. This Muhammad Ali fight poster is in fact signed right there by Muhammad Ali. Um, the person I got this from was a boxer. His dad was a uh, boxing promoter here locally, and they were actually um, uh, friendly or friends with Muhammad Ali. And uh, Muhammad Ali had come to his house, and they signed several things for the dad, and uh, who was also a prominent doctor. And I ended up with two of those. So there it goes. Line number 21, 25, 30, 25, 30, give me 30, give me 30, 25, 30 on the 19. This little metal HO train set. Cassius says, I bet it feels good to let this stuff go. Yes. You know, I, I have a um, very strange job because I really love... $50. Really love going out and finding things. Love going out and finding stuff. But then when you have it, you have to sell it. And uh, so we we have to sell stuff. And so here we are selling things. Here, I'm going to tilt that up a little bit. Um, and it is nice to kind of, uh, you know, in my own life, I would say that I'm working towards being more minimalistic than anything. Uh, you wouldn't know it if you walked in my store. <laughs> you walk in my store, it's fairly organized, but people would be like, man, it's pretty full in here. The reason we put these uh, project lighters up is that there are people who restore lighters and, you know, um, uh, a wheel or an insert or a body, a chassis for a lighter can be reused and rebuilt. And there will be people who will rebuild and reuse these lighters for other things. So it's a great lot for somebody who likes to restore lighters. And yes, there are people who restore lighters, just like there's people who restore toys and cars. Um, you know, there's, there's somebody for everything. I, find. I had this around the store for a while. Um, Jeff Phillips was uh, died fairly young, and so his skateboards are quite rare, and you can see there's some good interest in it. Um, I'll show the bottom view. It's not beaten up whatsoever. Um, it's a uh, it's a fairly rare skateboard, so it doesn't surprise me it's a two hundred dollars. I got this the same day that we got um, Steven's car. It was in the garage on the floor next to Steven's car, and I knew that old skateboards can be collectible, so we picked it up. And we had it around the store, and I was just waiting for an auction where I could put it through. And um, we had. Uh, um, New uh, new wheels put on it because the old ones were not great, and I think it costs us like about 120 bucks to get the wheels put on and stuff. But it is a usable skateboard. There it goes. Old skateboards, they're collectible. Go check your sheds. The things that you wouldn't know, and the the, the ding donging at the door is actually a uh, lot of Lego selling. <laughs> Somebody's downstairs uh, buying a, a bunch of Lego that we we picked up the other day. This little Firestone ashtray, off it goes, $35. That's about what we sell them for in the store. These were a uh, retro piece that I decided to bring in the store. We just thought we'd try them out. I think they were selling uh, for 40 bucks or something like that, Canadian. So they're going for uh, $20 is less than my cost. But, you know, sometimes you just have to put stuff on sale and let it go. And I, I brought these in because I remembered having these when I was a kid. And I remembered having fun in the backseat of the car playing this as we go on a road trip. Little baseball games. We have a little red dot that kind of goes around. It was great fun. So, 
sold $20.75 into lot number 30, 20, uh, 20, 25, uh, 20, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, football, uh, 20, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 
think it was worth, and I'm happy for them <laughs> if, if they want it. Uh, Matthew Fox, welcome to Junior Explorers. Matthew joined our uh, sort of our little clubhouse, our Curiosity Clubhouse. Thanks, Matthew. This is a nice little timer, and it does work. You could use that as an egg timer in your kitchen or something, too. I just thought it was such a cute-looking thing. Very attractive looking. I wish they made products look more attractive now. A lot of times they're just plastic and very generic, but look at the style that went into this. That's when you had artists and designers building stuff for you, if even a red Kodak timer. Oh, this is a... Uh, we were selling these at the store. Um, it's a glow-in-the-dark basketball that has a light-up ball inside of it. So uh, as you play basketball, it basically is like a glowing orb. It's pretty cool, actually. We got these at the New York Toy Fair. Um, if you watched the video when I went to the New York Toy Fair a couple years ago, I think you'll probably see when I went to this booth and bought these things. And that was the last one I had left. So I thought, okay, best put it up for sale. And it'd be fun to play basketball at night with that. Uh, number 46 on the uh, black rotary vintage phone 20 by 30. Rotary dial phones. There are people who are hooking these back up in their vintage houses. If you've got a retro style kitchen, it's a nice thing to have on your little, on your table there. And they do still work. You can still, at least where I am, you can still make a phone call with a rotary uh, number, even on a modern line. I think it was just a myth or legend that said that you wouldn't be able to use them, but they still work. You're able to dial out with it. Well, it's a good price for that. I mean, that's actually a fair size. You can't tell from the picture, but it's it's quite large. These sprint racers are quite big. Matthew, thank you so much for the uh, early birthday wishes. Uh, tomorrow is my birthday. Um, I won't be doing a um, live feed or anything tomorrow because I'll be doing birthday stuff. Very low key. I'm actually kind of a, you know, other than having a YouTube channel here, I'm kind of a private person. Like, I don't go out <laughs> a lot. You know, I spend time with my wife and kids and very rarely with my friends. Um, sometimes I go to car shows, but I'm a pretty low key dude. So I'll be having a quiet sort of birthday tomorrow. This bottle is kind of neat because uh, the old bottles like this, they have a marble insert inside, which actually acts as a stopper if you tip it completely upside down. So it will stop the uh, flow. Pretty neat idea. Natasha, welcome to Junior Explorers. Thanks for joining. Uh, if you're wondering what all this is, people joining the uh, Junior Explorers and all that, it's basically that. To, uh, it's, it's kind of like a um, uh, Patreon account, but on uh, on YouTube. So those people that are sort of joining up are just joining to support the, the channel and what we do. And I appreciate that. Um, Tiki Tiki Hut. Coco Joe's Hawaiian bookends. Pretty cool, actually. $60, Here's an old bottle. I wonder if my friend Bob will find it interesting. I think it still has some of the uh, linen in it. It will. It's guaranteed to make your mustache grow at least that big. <laughs> he didn't. He before he tried Sloan's liniment, he had a bare face. He woke up the next morning, he had that mustache. This is a heavy phone. Ring central calls. The, um, some of these, uh, I think the next phone would have been one that, used, that was used in a farmhouse. And it actually had a uh, like a crank on it. You could do a party line. So there'd be multiple phones. Sometimes you'd have to share a line with your neighbor. Could you imagine that? If you want to use the phone, you might try to pick it up and your neighbor would be on talking and you could like listen into their conversation. What a terrible idea. <laughs> but in remote areas, you didn't have much choice. You might have had to share your phone line with somebody else. You just have a different ring. In fact, at uh, Melissa's uh, mom's farm, they still have a party line. Delphina said, said twenty dollars. She said, "Happy birthday! May you have a great day. Thank you so much." So at the farmhouse, um, if we're sitting there, the phone will ring, but it has a different ring for if it's for her grandma who has a little cabin on the property. Monkey bank. I don't know if I'd let a monkey shoot a coin the size of my head 
towards sure, my face. Not, <laughs> I don't think in real life I'd let a monkey do that. I don't think I'd give them a giant plate of copper and hold a box in front of my chest and say, just fire away. <laughs> Lots of different stuff selling today. When I was a kid, I used to love getting stuff like this around Christmas time. A little corgi van. And this is a uh, circus van, a circus truck. It does have its little uh, roof mount accessory that goes on there. Just a fun little piece. Got its box. Incidentally, with the tags that are on some of these boxes, I highly recommend uh, warming them up with a hairdryer before you try and remove them. You don't want to cause any damage. Cool looking clock. Very simple in design, kind of like a throwback, throwback Art Deco piece, don't you think? It's got that, very much that Deco kind of look, but it was made likely in the 50s. Nice piece though. <laughs> 50 bucks, going to Virginia. And these prices are in Canadian funds, by the way. So when you uh, look at the exchange rate, I think if you're paying $10 Canadian, you're only paying, what? seven dollars or so us right somebody now. can do the math for me but there's uh, about a 30 percent difference i think in our in our dollar right now um so there is a big discount for those of you that are buying okay. in american funds which will help offset the cost of shipping or what have you like one thing I miss about my old location, my old store, is that I had the whole store lined with these old pennants and it really gave it a fun look. I thought about doing that at my existing store, but it might clutter it up too much. So I never did put them up, but uh, anytime I come across pennants, I generally pick them up because I think they're pretty cool and there's always somebody who's looking for a neat old pennant. And these are definitely oldies, 40s, 50s kind of era. Big felt pennants. So $30.76 This is Mattel. It's not Barbie. It's Barbie's like kid sister kind of deal. I can't remember her name. Somebody watching is going to know. Yeah, the, the brand name is Lego. Um, somebody's asking why do people call it Legos. I think it's one of those colloquial dialect sort of things where some people call it Legos even though it's not. Just like uh, we should call it Porsche, and a lot of people call it Porsche. So I think it's just where you are, people call it different things. Um, it's 2D, somebody said. There it goes. Let's see, lots of accessories with this one too, and she's got a little original stand. I got these off the original owner too, which was nice. So, 25, 73, 45. Number 63, here's another one. Look, well, she's got her wigs. She's got her clothes. Looks like she has a grass skirt in there to somewhere, too. I can't tell what that is. There it goes. We put a couple records in just to see how they go uh, at this auction because we put a whole pile of records through on the 18th. Yeah, honestly, it's just kind of nice to uh, nice, nice to sell some things all at once. The very famous David Bowie cover. I wonder if somebody's going to listen to it or if they're going to frame it and put it up as art. You never know. The original copy of Little New Scoop. Boy, they had such fun album covers. Somebody was commenting the other day about uh, they were watching the Beatles documentary Get Back and just how how much more interesting men of the era dressed. You know, there we go, Beatles right there. Floral shirts and vests and, you know, uh, striped pants and all, all the rest. You know, I remember reading at the time old Archie comics from the 60s and looking at the outfits that the artists put on the, the characters then and thinking, man, they sure do dress different. Um, it'd be nice to see, uh, you know, a little bit more flair and fashion come back into common practice. Don't you think? Maybe I'll start wearing 
furry vest with uh, flowery shirts. I'll be that guy. <laughs> uh. Very famous record set. You probably noticed that between the last lot and this one, they recreated that picture on the cover. So on the red album, it's M in the 60s, and they retook that picture later on. Let's there be rock it looks like they're on a mountaintop you know where are they plugging their amp in that's what i want to know oh they're on stage maybe hard to find a plug-in on the top of the mountain sometimes typewriters are kind of an odd thing because half the people would actually try and use it and the other half will just put it on a shelf and look at it um, I think it just fascinates people mechanical stuff always will fascinate people I'm sure of it people are very tactile they like handling and moving stuff around and old watches and typewriters stuff have that oh somebody said the Barbie dolls were Tootie and Skipper. I wouldn't mind driving an old truck like that in real life. Like having a full-size one that I use as my everyday. The the Ford truck I have right now is great. It doesn't have the same class as a 40s truck, but I don't think driving a 40s truck would be as practical as a daily driver. You'd have to get one, I think, that was maybe hot-rodded that you could put modern tires and have a good heater in. Maybe, that, maybe that's something I should look into. It. Oh, that's cool. Michelle back and I see when you're part of our club, you get a different, uh, you get a, a, a different uh, sort of banner. Yeah, Guy Cass seems to be doing good. I wonder down the road how 1960s and 70s big American tanks like this with real cars will fare with gas prices and electric vehicles coming more into fashion. I wonder from an investment perspective if people will be buying the real thing. I often wonder about that. Studebaker, great orphan car. They had some pretty pretty cool styles. I am a fan of the uh, Golden Hawk. If you've ever seen the Studebaker Golden Hawk, I think it's a pretty sharp looking car. Wild kind of front end on it. Friend of mine, um, uh, Barry, actually, who might be watching this live feed, has a, I think it's a Golden or Silver Hawk. Just really like the look of them. They're very, very neat vehicles. And here she is. Oh, the Model A Ford. These were actually a um, pretty high-end die-cast vehicle. They were put out probably 15, 17 years ago at the, at the peak of die-cast collecting. Um, people were going crazy about 118 scale. Yeah, I've just got to find a life-size Volkswagen bus like this. But we want the one with the windows on the top. Probably like a turquoise and white. Something really happy and fun. That's on my radar as my next vehicle that I'd like to find. would be a nice old Volkswagen bus. Kind of expensive things, though. So that might be a little ways out. But when you put it out there in the universe, you... Um, Things have a way of coming back to you. When you focus on a goal, sometimes you reach it. So we'll see. Somebody said, Chuck says he's got the same truck as mine and he's got 300,000 miles on it. I, I just passed 40,000 miles on mine, Chuck. So I guess you're saying I got a few years left. <laughs> Well, they put the picture of the worst Bob Dylan poster on the top, but these were actually posted on uh, on buildings and stuff. So those are authentic, original Bob Dylan posters. Oh, yeah, if you have an HO scale train set, that's a great deal. These things are like 20, 30 bucks each at a train shop. So. Look at that. Wonderful if you got a train set at home. Those things are, uh, oh, some are double O actually. Even more unique. 
First appearance of the Rainbow Rider. Here we got some comics coming through. First appearance of the Rainbow Rider. Comics are always kind of funny because um, you'll have comics in sequence that are all the same age and one will be worth like hundreds of dollars and one will be worth a dollar. And it's all to do with if it's the first appearance or somebody like this is the first appearance of Hydro Man. First appearance of Hydro Man. Um, anytime you have a first appearance, it's considered a key issue. Um, sometimes if you have uh, an artist who does their first uh, artwork and they end up becoming very famous, it's a key issue. So I've had to get an education in comics in the last year or so coming across so many comics. So this is the first appearance of a character called The Citadel. Uh, it just makes it a key issue. And these are the issues that start going up in value um, if they do a movie in particular oh deb brown thanks for joining up <laughs> deb brown's got the green banner um if you if you do or if you see a movie in hollywood made and they bring in this character like if a green lantern movie is made and the citadel appears and suddenly those comics end up going for 10 or 100 times more than what they're worth uh, this is the not the forced. It's the first Jopez cover art. So George Lopez went on to do many, many more covers and, and much more artwork. But this is his first cover that he ever did. So for somebody who's collecting sort of first or key issues, this is the first of a fairly important artist. And it was the, the very last issue of Guardians of the Galaxy. Number 62, so they only made 62 issues of Guardians of, the, of Guardians of the Galaxy. Not a huge run. So we have probably about uh, 10 or 15 comics to go here. I guess I'll leave it pointed at the screen. And then there's some series that don't really take off, or there's some series. Um, Nova comic issue number one. But the first issue of something doesn't necessarily mean that it's super valuable. Um, Rogue here is a more popular character, X-Men. Yeah. There it goes. Justice League America, first, first issue of that. So we'll see. Um, Adrian says, I don't know why you still take things to the auction. It appears uh, people are looking for bargains that go there. Well, that's what auctions really are for. Um, auctions are for me to clear out stuff in mass. Um, and honestly, sometimes I get way more than I was asking for something on the auction. So I don't stress too much about what things are going for. I, I don't stress too much for what things are going for. I have a goal in mind of what I want this auction to do for our store. I focus on the end dollar amount because everything, some are high, some are low. Things will balance themselves out. Everything balances itself out in time. And I have to say, it's very nice to have an outlet like this where I can move 930 things in one day. Very, very challenging to do that at the store. To move 930 things in one day, an auction is a great way to do that. And to be honest with you, I'm happy when somebody out there gets a good bargain or a good deal. Um, oh, this is the first appearance of Madame Webb, who became a reoccurring character later on. Um, so sixty dollars, you know, somebody might get a good investment piece at that price, and perhaps it'll go up. Adrian says you're always saying something's worth more than it goes for. Well, that's probably because um, not always. Like the license plate, the Klondike license plate, I had that in my store for I think thirty dollars, and it sold for two hundred and twenty-five here. Things do balance themselves out. These comics, I'm quite happy with the prices they're going for. If I if I wasn't selling them at auction today, they would be sitting in my showcase just sitting. And I would much rather be using the money from this. And money, I think Walt Disney said, money is just a tool. It's it's a useless thing. It's inert. It's paper. But when you turn these objects into that tool that can be used for something else, you can build buildings. You can uh, build houses. You can go on vacations. You can do stuff. Um, you can help people. So there, are, all the stuff just sitting around the store is useless to me until it goes. And uh, so for a day like today, it's a lot of stuff that I just had sitting around that will go. 
If people get feels, that's great. If people get something that they really hadn't seen before and loved, like the license plate or what have you, then um, then so be it. I'm glad for them. I wouldn't keep coming back and doing these auctions if it wasn't helpful to me and how I run my business. And you think about the margins of a retail store. When you go into a place like, and I've mentioned this before, if you go into a place like The Gap, let's say, they will have a sweater for $25, but you know very well that they're going to give you some sort of coupon that's going to save you $5. So their margin goes down and down. And then eventually they have to sell that item for $5 on the discount rack because it's just not moving. It's no different. You make your margin off of certain things and you accept less on others because it balances itself out in the end. Sue, welcome to Junior Explorers. Thank you for joining up on our uh, on our, uh, on our with our team here. And you get a special green banner now, Sue. <laughs> Anne says uh, she bought a bunch of stuff at the last auction and shipping was great, efficient, and well-packed. That's good to hear because uh, sometimes you don't hear about the uh, uh, positive experiences enough. Star Trek comic number one. I, I did think this one would go for a little bit more than 15 bucks because there's a lot of Star Trek fans out there. But it, they did print an awful lot of them, though. Excalibur comic number one. I think we're getting out of the comics in uh, four more lots, and then we start getting back into some other key items here. So we'll keep uh, we'll keep rolling with it for a little bit and see how we do. Um, there is a probably a, a little sign up link as you're watching that allows you to join our channel. Now you don't have to join the channel. I, I'm just saying that that's available there. That's basically for people who just support the content and support what we do. Um, it's something that YouTube offers basically in lieu of um, people doing uh, Patreon. Uh, Erad says eBay can be brutal to sellers. Basically zero protection for the seller. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, I don't sell a lot on eBay uh, anymore for that reason. I have, I have shipped things off um, and, you know, somebody just changed their mind or whatever and then you have to take it back and uh, pay for shipping and all that. And sometimes that ends up costing you a lot of money. There's very little uh, protection for the, the process with, with eBay, I find. There we go. Little miniature hand-carved totem pole. Somebody had to sit down and carve this out. A lot of these were sold at gift shops in the mountains. Um, indigenous peoples um, would make them to sell. Uh, sometimes they're also school projects too. You know, they might say today we're working on a totem pole or something. So, oh, this was kind of cool. These are all. It's a strong box full of 1920s airplane magazines. Really, really great graphics on these. I don't know if you can see that image well enough. But look at the artwork. Just fabulous. If somebody's into airplanes, that would be a wonderful thing to have. Frame up a couple of these in your in your office or in your house. And imagine all the ads in there are probably really cool too. See, here's the thing. I just had this box sitting. I didn't even have this stuff out for sale at the store. It was one of those things that I, I picked up somewhere and I was like, man, what am I going to do with all this? So there was a whole bunch of antique medicine and I just threw it up here for auction and 130 bucks I would never have expected. But I guess when you average out maybe five bucks a bottle or something like that, that's probably about right. It's just, I'm glad it's, it's going. I'm glad it's going to go. I find that the, I actually have a fair number of doctors that buy this stuff that use them as displays. Rose glass chandelier. Well, this will be a nice piece once it's all reassembled. I was gonna put this in our new store and we didn't. Oh, Stephen Rhodes, welcome to uh, welcome to the club, Stephen. <laughs> Glad to have you guys with us. Oh, somebody says in Washington those would sell for fifteen dollars a bottle. Okay, well, so then maybe for a reseller there's some good uh, value there. Line number 14 on the box of 78s again. 7 out 10, 12 and a half, 15, Another box of 78s. 78s are, um, there are some that are quite rare. Like if you find um, Chuck Berry's Run Run Rudolph, his Christmas album, I think that's a few hundred bucks at least. Early pressings of Elvis, sometimes there's very expensive, uh, very expensive 78s. A little assortment of comics, probably good for reading. I don't think there's anything probably super rare in there, but 
there in Lincoln. Comics are comics. <laughs> nice little assortment of table lighters. We're actually doing good for time. Normally they do about 100 lots in an hour, and we're at lot 116, and we're 40 minutes in or so into the auction itself. 41 minutes in. So they're plugging right along. He's moving pretty fast. So 35, 75, 45. Lot number 17 on the Grand Soft Drink Wooden Crate. Grand Soft Drink was only around for a short number of years, so it's probably a, a fairly rare thing for a soda collector. I imagine that's who's buying this. As a wooden crate, it's probably worth 20 bucks, but as a wooden crate that says Grand Soft Drink, it was worth 50. Lot number 18, 30, 35. Uh, 30, and there's a little oak swivel stool. I mean, heck, you couldn't build a drafter stool for 30 bucks. So somebody will get a nice old chair for that, and it's a good usable piece of furniture. But frankly, I just didn't have room for it in the store. This, this particular chair is kind of neat because it actually hinges and folds forward and turns into a step stool. Very, very old piece of furniture. Very neat piece of furniture, too. Pretty ingenious. I kind of wish that all of my chairs at my dining room table had the ability to turn into step stools because Melissa's forever dragging our dining room chairs to use to step up and grab spices off the top shelf. <laughs> Maybe at our new house I'll have to find a stool that turns into a step stool or something like that. Oh, uh, thank you for joining. Who was it that joined? Got 30, 30 Janet, Janet, welcome to the club. This is quite large. It's one quarter scale means it's well over a foot tall. Uh, hand painted piece, really interesting. Somebody would have had to spend a lot of time putting that together. In fact, um, it was Ravenous FX, which is a uh, production studio. They do work for movies and they do airbrushing and stuff. They made a lot of these dioramas that I have at the store. This just happened to be an extra one. Um, so he was, I think, paying well over a hundred dollars an hour to get those done. So he probably had it three, four hundred bucks invested in that. So somebody did get a good deal on that one. <laughs> we brought these in thinking the kids in my neighborhood were younger than they actually were, and I thought, oh, the kids in my area would love to have a brand new cuddle buddy pillow. Nope, they're older. The kids that come through my store are more interested in playing pinball games and buying candy. <laughs> but it's a full-size pillow that looks like a bunny. It's not an antique. It is new. Still has the tags on it. Yeah, it'd be a nice little fun Christmas present for somebody. Especially for a youngster who thinks it's great. There you go. Five bucks. I mean, look, they can have themselves a brand new pillow. I think the retail on that was 30 or so. And it's out of my store. And here we go, a barograph atmospheric machine. Kind of a neat thing. It reads the atmospheric pressure and uh, it prints it on this rotating barrel so you get an idea of what the, the pressure is doing. Really, really cool piece of engineering. Just a fantastic looking device too. Nice little wooden case with brass handle on it. There it goes. Now, this is a, a lantern that you don't see that often. You see handheld train lanterns like the one coming up fairly often. But this is the type that would have been mounted inside the cabin of the car itself. But these are way less common. Uh, you can tell from the mounting brackets that it would have been on the, uh, the inside of the uh, car. Unusual piece, and it was stamped uh, CPR. This is the type you're more you see more often is the uh, handheld lanterns that uh, the signalmen or the, the caboose folks, basically your train operators would use these things. And it is a proper kerosene lamp. The fuel goes in the bottom with the wick, you light it, use it camping or what have you. On the Swiss uh, military helmet, lot number 26, 70, 80, uh, 70, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, And the Swiss helmet sure looks a lot like a German one. In fact, I think we, we had this mislabeled when we fixed it. But really interesting piece. And you always want to look with an old helmet. Does it have its liner inside? And yes, it does. Helmets are always worth more if they've got the liner. But if you're missing the liner, you can actually get a liner for it. Oh, Heather's on. Thank you, Heather. Oh, great. Awesome. Welcome to the club. Melissa's telling me people are joining up with our, uh, our, our Explorer Club that we've got on there. 
1937 Yellowstone Park postcards. What's interesting about these auctions for you guys watching at home, if you are in the business of buying and selling stuff, it's great to kind of see what things actually sell for. I have people all the time that tell me that they want X amount of dollars for something, and I can say with certainty, well, I was able to get this or that for it at auction. I would never, like, $45 for the Vancouver City Guide travel book, I would have been totally fine with that at the store. I probably would have had it out for $25, $30, bucks, but it's a very rare piece, very early piece. Uh, and so you can see somebody in, in British Columbia, where this is from, bought it. It's going to somebody who's local, and that's great. 1934 cookbook. I wonder how many people are going to buy this cookbook and try the recipes in here. Sometimes they have weird measurements, though. Why use a knuckle full of salt? A penny farthing's worth of baking soda. Like, what? <laughs> what does this mean? I've never read an old cookbook, but it's like, I'm pretty sure they just guessed. They just like grab random things around the kitchen and just more or less just, yeah, just chuck it in the pot. <laughs> Different measuring system for sure. Oh, some old arrowheads. These did come out of the uh, Stan Reynolds collection, so these were museum pieces at one point. So whoever's getting that in uh, the Yukon is getting some good quality pieces there. So, Now, if you've got an old Austin A40, this is a really cool thing to have. Um, to the right person, this is one of those things where it probably would have done better on eBay uh, because then you're going to reach more people that can, can do a search and find this manual. Um, but Austin A40 is a popular vehicle. It's very difficult to find early shop manuals, especially hardcover like this. So, 25, 75, 58. Kelly Gruber baseball. Oh yeah, this is the World Series, not the Work Series. It's the World Series baseball. He was the uh, pitcher for the Blue Jays. So somebody who's a Blue Jays fan or baseball fan will probably think that's pretty neat. You probably get a nicer holder for it though. That's the uh, one that came with it, but a nice little case would look great with that. Well, number 34 on the vintage master pen set. It's got a wax seal. It's got the old bottle. It's got the pen. Yeah, just kind of a fun little set. And there are people who just collect tins too. So even just that little tin is probably worth 15, 20 bucks on its own to somebody who collects that kind of stuff. There it goes. Is Alex happy? Alex is happy. Oh, you want to see the upcoming lots? Is that better, guys? Melissa just gave me some. She she said you guys wanted to see see the screen panned a little bit. How about that? So, $15, These beer can lighters would have been promotional sort of pieces back then. Oh, was Gruber third baseman? Who am I thinking of? Kelly Rudy? Somebody, somebody correct me. Who was the uh, who was the pitcher in that series? I, my mind has gone completely blank. And my grandpa and my dad were both watching those Jays games back in '92. You'd think I'd remember. Third baseman pitcher, yeah, you both gotta have a good arm. I was a uh, pitcher for a number of years myself, and oftentimes you get place at at uh, shorter third base as well, because you gotta have a you gotta be able to you gotta be able to fire it over. Ward was the pitcher. So $40, Here's a bunch of antique marbles. I bought them from an antique man. And these were his marbles when he was a kid. I just simply don't know enough about marbles to be able to... I know that there are some that are much more rare than others, etc., etc., but I don't know enough 
I'm hoping that whoever uh, is bidding on them is a marble enthusiast and sees something kind of crazy in there. 110 Michigan Bounds at the 884, lot number 40. 20, 25, 25, 25, 20 minutes my drive. We've got the Pez collectors. 30, 20 by 30. 20 by 30, give me 30. I wonder, I think Pez candy would actually go bad. Sugar has an incredibly long shelf life. 30, 35, 30 minutes my 35, 30 minutes my 35, 30 minutes my bottle. 30, 35, 30 minutes my 35, 30 minutes my 35, 30 minutes my 35. So Don't know that I try eating 20-year-old candy. I actually, who am I to talk? We tried that 30- or 40-year-old gum at the store, and it actually still tasted like gum. <laughs> Nobody got sick. Monica Velt. Welcome, Monica. To our Dutch friends. Nice little cross pen with its paperwork. Gold plated. I don't know if I never did take the diamond tester. There's diamond looking things on it. I can't tell you that they are diamond because I didn't test them. Should have. Even if they were diamonds, it would just be diamond flake. Oh, the automatic color four selector pen. It's surprising how much stuff I just have lying around the store when I'm, I'm going through boxes and I have a box full of stuff. I'm like, why the heck am I not selling this? Stuff. All of the smalls, as we call it in the business, like these pens, they don't take up much room, so you'd be surprised how much it piles up on you. You have enough for a whole auction sale. Oh, this is a really cool piece. This actually would sit the other way around. We're looking at it upside down. This is a ceiling mount, explosion proof ship's light, and it's solid brass. It's very heavy. It would look great, like on the out outside of a porch or something. 1940, 60, 70, Yeah, it used to shoot a little dart out the end of it. You think in the future they'd have more advanced technology than a little dart with a suction cup at the end. <laughs> nice silver cutlery set with its box. This is the IS silver, so this would be... Uh, pretty high silver content. Nice set for someone. It's I always say to people, it's cheaper to buy. It's cheaper to buy an authentic vintage silver set than it is even just to go and buy a set from Walmart. Really, for the quality you get. Sometimes antiques are actually a cheaper way to go. This is a neat thing. For for five bucks, I think somebody will think it's cool. Smash up derby. It does have cars and stuff in it, but I think there's a couple doors missing or something. So I listed it as incomplete. But what a what a great thing that what a great toy that was as a kid. If you had the Smash Up Derby set, you had it made. We had one of those around when I was a kid. It was great fun to play with. This is an oddball. It's a it's a line remote toy. Really interesting piece, actually. And fairly large. You can't tell from the picture, but it is the size of like a 118 scale car or somewhere around there. It's pretty big. There you go, a nice Harmony lap steel guitar with the original case, and I bought this from the original owner, whose entire family was musical. The mom played violin, the, the uncles played uh, guitars, the dad played steel guitar. They were in country music bands back in the 40s. It was just a, a fun, cool thing. So if, if a person really likes that folksy sort of 40s country sound, like if you want to sound like, uh, you know, <laughs> if you want to sound like Bing Crosby on uh, uh, doing some Christmas albums in the 40s, those Hawaiian guitars give you a great sound. That's weird. This this Hot Wheels set only shows seven dollars and fifty cents for me. Oh, there it goes. I jumped up in a hurry. Sometimes these little Hot Wheels sets are quite rare, uh, in the sense that they maybe made fifteen hundred or two thousand or so of them, which is a lot. But there's more than two thousand people like that stuff. So. You can electrocute yourself at home, just like they did in the old days. Learn how to make a speaker or a radio. They're actually pretty handy little things to have. 
There was a period of time we were trying to find one of those for Jason, thinking he might like it. Nice old dinky toys. These things are built, uh, I was going to say like a tank, but in that case, literally kind of like a tank. Um, the old toys just stand up so much better than the new stuff. There's, more expensive to make them the way they made them back in the day, but die cast metal and heavy axles and sturdy is all get out. You think about it, you have a toy like this and it's gone through probably three generations already of kids two or three generations of kids and collectors and whoever else and there's still a viable thing sometimes older is better i'm going to see what lot number i'm going to try and find a lot number to aim for that will end the uh end the live stream at maybe we'll go as far as hmm. maybe we'll get up to 10 volkswagen i don't know I'll stay on for a few more lots. This, here you go. Uh, Sears catalog. People have these around their basements and stuff. Sometimes I dig through bookshelves. Can you sell a big old dictionary? Not as easy as it is to sell an old catalog. People like to go through them, look at the ads, look at the fashions. They're a great resource for people who are into um, making props. Or if you want to know how people dressed back in those days and make it authentic. Um, for somebody who does costume design, these catalogs are actually a pretty darn handy tool. If you remember the show, that 70s show, the mom in the 70s show dressed almost exactly like this. Kitty, was her name Kitty in the show? She used to dress like this with the denim on denim with the pop collar. That is correct. <laughs> That's it. Look at all the blue jeans they were selling back in the day. Here's a whole pile of wristwatches for repair. Somebody who's got more time and energy than me can build themselves a small fortune of watches off of this. So to give you an idea, if they can repair these, some of these would be worth like between $80 and $150 each. But they might need crystals, they might need cleaning, they might need a gear. So some people have to spend some time, but if a person's a watchmaker or can do it, they can make themselves probably, by doing repairs, hundreds and hundreds of dollars off of this lot. So for somebody with the right skill, that's actually a really great buy. Uh, anytime you see vintage mechanical wristwatches, they sell well when they're working good. <laughs> but anytime I come across lots like this in somebody's house or in their basement, I always buy it. Because um, I know that there's always going to be some gem mixed in there, and there's always somebody out there who can do something with it. There are people who do crafts with them, too. I'm not saying that's good or bad or not, but sometimes people take them apart just for the gears, and they make steampunk-looking things out of the gears. But in this situation, where I bought them from, they had thought that they might be garbage because they didn't work, and I said, no, I buy watches working or not. Um, and thankfully I did. I found um, in amongst uh, some of the, the stuff I bought, there was a, um, a, a beaten up old Rolex in there, which even for parts is worth hundreds of dollars. So it's worthwhile to dig through this stuff. We have 1,730 people with us right now on the live stream. 1,740 people, I guess I should say, on the live stream. Uh, we've got 531 likes, which I uh, appreciate you guys uh, giving us a thumbs up on the channel there. Oh, just jumped up to 540 likes. <laughs> appreciate that. Um, oh, they're asking the question. So anyone that's having mic trouble, refresh your uh, unit because uh, the mic is uh, fine uh, on our other end here that we've just checked. Lot number 61, 7 out of 10. Oh, they're trying to they're trying to figure out the fuzziness of the microphone. He had a bunch of static before. They're just saying to refresh your screen. I think it's just that he's a loud talker and that microphone is spiking. There we go. You know, I sure hope that uh, they go back to doing live auctions again in the near future. Oh, that's it. They're switching out. They're switching out. Okay, hang on, guys. I'm going to flip this around while they're switching out. 
Okay. Hey, it's me. I've, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for watching the live stream with me. If you want to continue watching the live stream, you can go on to kauctions.ca and this stream will be going on basically throughout the rest of the day. I might pop back on later because I'm very curious to see how the uh, Beethoven um, sheet music does. There's a couple higher end pieces that have not sold yet. So we're going to maybe pop back on later and, and do a little uh, update and see how it goes. But all in all, I'm happy with how things are going. This is a great way to test the market and see what's selling. An auction sale like this also gives me parameters for when I'm buying. If I go to somebody's house and they've got a, a box of uh, camera parts, if they got a box of toys, I have an idea about what stuff is selling for. For instance, dinky toys, like the little uh, toy truck, those 15, 20 years ago would have sold for 80 to $100. But as generations shift and collectors uh, interests change, the prices now are coming down to like 15 to 25 or 30 for something like that. Um, so the prices really do fluctuate as you go through different generations. Um, and even when it comes to old cars. So it kind of gives you an idea of what's popular now. And those things shift. If any of you were collecting back in the 1980s, maybe you'll remember that Model A Fords were really hot. A rumble seat Model A Ford was like, man, that's the pinnacle. And then it was 57 Chevys. People wanted those two things. If you had a rumble seat Ford, if you had a 57 Chevy, super hot. Um, now it's kind of like, they're still somewhat collectible, but um, a nice restored Model A Ford that would have gone for thirty to $35,000, even in the 1980s, has come down to a point now where you can buy that same kind of car restored for like 10 grand. Um, it's changed a lot in the last little while. Um, and certain cars, of course, are worth more than others. But these auctions give you an idea of where the market is and, um, and what is collectible, what's hot and what's not. You have to stay on top of things as an antique dealer because um, maybe if I kept buying stuff that was popular 20, 30 years ago, but not now, we'd be wasting money on it. Um, like coal oil lamps and, and stuff like that. Um, a lot of crocs that uh, were selling hot before and aren't as hot now. Um, although sometimes crocs do come back around because people are using them. Uh, but there are certain collectibles that definitely aren't as popular now as they were then. So for me, this is a great barometer, a great check to see how things are going <laughs> and how the auction is doing. But I will come back on uh, at some point later and we'll do a little update. But guys, thank you for watching today's episode. Thanks for um, being involved with it. And uh, we'll see you guys back again later. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you all soon. And again, check out the auction, kauctions.ca. It's running until uh, about 10 o'clock tonight. And we have a second auction of music, not four auctions. There's another auction coming up December 18th, which has a bunch of records in it. So if you're a music aficionado, um, or if you just like them for the cover art, there's some great stuff going through there. So have a wonderful day, guys. We'll see you all soon and bye for now. As for me, I'm going to keep watching at my end and uh, head off to the store to go visit Bill and see if he's doing okay. Have a good day, guys. <laughs> Bye.